what's your craft? So I'm taking part of the what's your craft tag. So there's 30 questions here that I am going to answer for you. And I will try and find a few other links and link them down below to the other people who are doing this. So question one is when slash how did you first know that you were a witch? I didn't fully like know it. I just like kind of came into it like wanting to know more after watching Charmed after reading the witch season by Jeff Morat and it just got me looking into books that were at my library and it just went from there. So it kind of evolved after curiosity. So there you go. Two, how long have you been practicing? I have been practicing about a decade. So yeah, about a decade, just after a decade. I started when I was about 15, 16. So about a decade. It doesn't really feel that long because I'll explain later in one of the other questions. What kind of which are you? So I have, I started like a lot of other people started off as Wiccan, but for the past few years, like after a few years, like a little bit of time, I moved into the space where I'm kind of calling myself an eclectic pagan because I'm bringing in a few ideas and just kind of making them my own. So eclectic pagan. So what path slash tradition do you follow? Like it kind of relates back to my previous answer eclectic, but I am looking into like following Bridget because she's called to me the past little while. And so with a little bit of like, I'm slowly merging into like looking into the Celtic side of of like Celtic paganism. But right now I'm just we're tr like trying to connect more with Bridget. So there's that. Number five is your craft devotional or secular. How do you incorporate your faith into your craft if you do? So I'm kind of like, I want to say I'm a mix because like when I'm at work or with, like family or friends, it's like, why give a crap of, of like what I or other than the person standing next to me believe kind of thing. If we're getting along, we're good. But when I'm at home and a few of the activities and things I do are a part of my craft. So <laughs> I hope that answers the question in some, the question in some way. So are you, uh, number six is, are you closeted, a closeted witch or in the open? If so, how do your friends slash family feel about your path? I am open. I have been since I started. Like, the people that I have told are like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and so... It's just they're aware kind of thing so and they don't really care so and yeah that's how it's brought brought up like you can believe it like if you're a good person like to me and whatever I don't care like what color your skin is what religion 
whatever. If we get along, we're good. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, number seven is, are you solitary or do you have a coven? I am solitary. Personal preference is me as a solitary. Like, I don't see myself in the near future becoming a part of a coven. Con and it's and it has been out of like convenience to be solitary, along with that personal preference. So solitary. Number eight, what is something you wish someone had told you, or something you wish you had known when you started? You don't have to get okay. So you don't have to get everything at once. And you'll find your own way. You don't have to, like, oh, I need to get all this. I need to put all of this in my book shadows. I have to have a book shadows. Not everybody wants a book of shadows. Not everybody is going to use all of these things listed. You don't have to acquire, like, 50, 60 things to be considered a witch, a Wiccan, a uh, druid, whatever it is, to do, to be a, be a part of this faith, or be someone in one of these traditions, so you'll find your way, like, don't jump into a coven because you think you have to, so... Yeah. Uh, number nine, what resources, uh, what resource was the most valuable for your beginning practice? What about now? I said earlier, the witch season series by Jeff Morat. It kind of brought in like perception isn't what it is to be. And that's, that continued into me reading the Sweep series by Kate T Tiernan. Like, don't accept everything at face value. Do your research kind of thing. Or, like, if you accept everything at face value or if you just go with who you think is, like, the good person, it might get you in trouble. Uh, now, it, I, some of the things that are influencing me or becoming more valuable to me are my Bridget books because I am, like I said, it's, this is going to be a recurrent theme, I think, with the questions is, I want that connection with Bridget. And, so, the books and information I have about her are becoming more valuable to me. So number 10, what was your first spell? Was it successful? To be honest, I don't remember my first spell. I don't do spells that often. And if I don't remember my first spell, I don't think it was that successful. So <laughs> there you go. I don't do successful spells, so I bet I can do successful spells. Spells, but I don't think the first one that I did was that successful, if I don't remember it. Okay, question 11. What do you do when you feel out of touch with your craft? Like, for me, I listen to music. I read. I light a candle. Sometimes I'll flip through one of my tarot decks. So I have a few things that bring me back up in any aspect of my life, bring me back uh, up and say, yeah, I can get back in touch with these things. Number 12, have you ever doubted your faith or ability? A little bit when I, just before I went to university and about a year or so into it, I kind of put my spirituality on the back burner and it has taken me a little bit 
to bring that off the back burner and come into it. 13, what are some grounding techniques that you find work for you? When I strike that match and light my candle, I focus on that and I'm just like, okay, it's all good. And I have and another thing that is that I've been starting to do is when I take a shower, I'm like, I just go like, as the water is washing over me, I'm like, okay, it's all good. It's all good. And it's then I'll say like either a prayer or just like I'll do a version of like that's my spell work kind of thing. That's my spell work time is in the shower when I'm doing that. So <laughs> there you go. Number 14, what 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 is your biggest pet peeve in the magical community? Like Well, one, uh, like, the one that I thought off when I was writing these down, these questions down, is in books, like, even though I'm no longer Wiccan, it's just when authors say that, like, or interpret Wicca and witchcraft as the same thing, and they'll, like, flip-flop between the two terms, and, like, for me, and I think a lot of for other people in the community, Wicca is a sp like a faith, a religious faith, and witchcraft is more of like the practice and spiritual kind of thing. So, and it, there's a difference between those two. So, <laughs> that is the pet peeve that is at like the forefront for me. So... Number 15, what was your biggest spell disaster? So, I was doing one about, oh, I don't say a few months back, but I think it was longer than that. This old guy was like, full on flirting with me, and I'm like, oh my god, gross. <laughs> it was not that, but it was just really, really awkward, and I'm like, uh, no, no, and... But he's like, oh, like, take my phone number, call me, and all this. So I'm like, um, awkward. And later that day, over my cauldron, I started, like, I folded it. I put it into a candle, set it aflame, and put it into my cauldron. A piece of it went out. It was still, it wasn't fully on flame, but it was still hot and you could see it's still burning down and I'm like oh my god don't burn my table don't burn my floor or carpet and I'm like ah so again I don't do many many spells and so to a lot of people that's nothing but for me that was so I can't complain too much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a few people had worse. Number 16, what is your view on black magic? Like, to me, it like depends on your view on what's black magic. Like, what to what degree do you go really down to the crevices of black magic? Like, there is a time and place for it and you go to a certain degree of it because like you can't always do white light magic and not have you gotta do like the shadow shit kind of thing so yeah there is a need for the balance so 17 is witchcraft an everyday thing or is it only for special occasions for me it's an everyday thing yeah, you can make it for the special days that you do. For me, Mavon, Samhain, Yule, and Imbolc. Special occasions. But it can be everyday kind of thing. There are several books 
that are 365 days, 365 ways or whatever, for whatever, and there are things to do every single day or every week, and so that's how some authors make their income for like that year or whatever is those types of books. Okay, 18, do you meditate? I do. I do meditate, so not to the extent of some other people doing like 10, 30 minute meditation, guided meditations or on their own. Like I'll either do it in the shower or just gaze at a candle and like right now I can only do like meditations for a few seconds, like not a few seconds, but maybe like 30 seconds and then I'll be like, okay, I'm good. So, eventually I may, it may be longer, but that's how I meditate right now. I don't do much, so. 19, do you practice divination? If so, what techniques? I do tarot. And I'll do, like, weekly spread, like, I'll do weekly spreads. Once in a while, I'll do monthly spreads. Not too much. Like, not far ahead. Too far ahead. So, I'll do, like, daily draw draws. And I'll do sp a few spreads for myself. I've done a few spreads for other people. So, I do tarot. 20. Moon faces plan... <laughs> Planetary correspondences, day of the week, hours, irrelevant or key. For me, not a huge key or component of of what I do. I see the re relevance and w why it's so important to a lot of people. So I get it. And... Once in a while, I'll, like with candles, I'll use a certain color. And so, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't do it when I do. So, <laughs> I do get it. And I have done it. So, it's not key. Like, you got to do this exact the spell or ritual at this time, wearing this, pointing there, and if you want to do the complete opposite and that's what feels right for you, go ahead. So, a lot of the time, like, yeah, you can do that, but I think for some people it's just, if it feels right, that's what I'm going to do. 21. Spell language, do you like it simple? Do you dress it up? Is it poetry? Is it silent? For me, a lot of times it is silent. There'll be times where I'm like whispering in it, whispering in the shower to Bridget or I'll do my spell or whatever. So, and it does, if it just, like, it doesn't have to be this long, complicated award-winning spiel. It doesn't have to be what is considered like traditional poetry like every other like at the end of each sentence it's got a rhyme or whatever. Like if it's just like please Bridget help me out with this. That's fine. <laughs> if it's a quick little thing but If it's for like a formal thing, yeah, I can understand like for myself going doing a formal thing. I get that, but every single spell or ritual or whatever, it doesn't have to be like an uptight formal kind of thing. It can be in informal, it can be simple, it can be silent. So it doesn't have to be over the top kind of thing. 
22 do keep a book of shadows I like started off with one like something like this it was like really tiny just like that kind of thing now I I am rebuilding because I didn't have a book of shadows for a long while I kind of like tossed that I'm like uh I don't like this anymore now I'm using uh recollections binder so like from the Michaels planner creative year planner kind of thing I'm using that so I'm kind of working my book of shadows into that kind of kind of thing so I can move things around a lot of people like the hard bound kind of thing and for me it just makes a little sense to have that three ring kind of binder it's about this size so size wise and it's a little thicker so I have that and I can like take it with me it's clasped shut so it's all good 23 do you have an altar is it dedicated to any specific deity season or anything I do have one it's not like a totally extravagant it's the first four three four like compartments of this tower and one shelf just has one thing that is a representation of Bridget so nothing not the complete things de dedicated to her but it's just that one little shelf that one thing is dedicated to her 24 thoughts on the afterlife like I used to believe believe in the summer land because at the beginning of my spirit spiritual faith that's what is told in the books and um after a while I'm like I don't think I can call it Summerland if there is another world after after this so it's just an, uh, the other world but like to me I go I know I'm gonna get like flack for this but Sometimes I'm like, there isn't anything after this, but a part of me is like, maybe there is the other world. And when I get there, I'll be with the people that give a crap about me. <laughs> so, yeah. I know there are some that are, are like full hearted. There, yeah, there is the Summerland or the other world or the down world or whatever after we crook 25 do slash would you teach and practice witchcraft to your children I don't have kids yet but I likely would or like not totally bring them into my practice because like I would like bring some aspects into how I raise them but like for me and my sisters my parents didn't like our parents didn't 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 like make us go to church on Sundays and like they didn't why would they force us to go to church if they didn't and so in that aspect I would likely be the same like I wouldn't force it onto my kids but I'm like this is what mom believes and practices and here you go <laughs> so I would like I would like do these things but ultimately it would be their choice if they want to continue on or choose another faith So, 26, do you have a totem animal? If so, what is it? I don't. 27, 
what are some witch books that have influenced you. Like I said, the Bridget book, the Bridget books that I have, uh, The Witch Season by Jeff Morat has influenced me. So those are the two major, fa major books that have influenced me. Uh, there's a few others. If I think of it, I'll list them down below. Tools, handmade, natural only, natural materials only. I only need my will. Anything works if I wanted to see it. I kind of have a mishmash of stuff, so not a whole lot of natural stuff, but a lot of things purchased from an antique market, Value Village, hobby stores and stuff, so I kind of have a mishmash of stuff. A few things I have made, but other things I found either secondhand or not. 29. Do you have a magical name? No. Like the to like a total animal a magical name. I don't see myself having one. 30. Favorite season herb crystal rune tarot card symbol slash seagull. So I like fall. Lavender slash peppermint. Citrine. I don't do runes. I I don't have a favorite rune. So tarot card, the hermit. I've always liked it. And I don't think I have a favorite symbol or seagull. Seagull. Not seagull, but yeah. So those are 30 questions of what's your craft tag. Happy readings.